Thanks everyone for uh, being here tonight. My name is Ethan Gaddy. I'm a planner with the Chazen Companies. Uh, I'm accompanied here with Paul Cummings and he's also the senior planner project manager from Chazen Companies and Jordan Conway, who is manning the controls of uh, Zoom. She's far more capable than we are at this sort of thing. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna jump right into it. Um, so tonight um, we're here to talk about uh, the, the comprehensive plan. We're going to provide you with some project background, you know, walk you through the planning process, provide you an overview of the goals and recommendations, uh, discuss the implementation strategy, and the next steps uh, of the adoption process. And then we're going to open up the floor for some, you know, some brief public comments and questions. Um, you know, due to the nature of this this format, we're going to hold off on, you know, answering questions to the very end. It'd be great if you could just type the questions into the chat function. And we're also recording this. So I don't anticipate that we're gonna to get to all of the questions or that you all have, have thought of all of your questions during this meeting. Uh, so, you know, this is a public presentation. There will be ongoing um, parts of the adoption process where, you know, we're gonna be able to continue to address comments and questions as it goes. So by no means is, is this your only opportunity to, you know, to provide feedback on the plan. So we're gonna to wait to the end and use the chat function for questions. So um, what is a comprehensive plan? Uh, a comprehensive plan serves as a guiding policy document for a municipality. Uh, generally, it contains an overview of existing conditions like land use, demographic trends, uh, transportation systems, infrastructure, et cetera. Uh, it, it identifies the challenges and opportunities the community is facing, and then it identifies a shared vision and some goals for the community's direction. Um, and then it identifies the, you know, the actions, the partnerships and funding mechanisms that the town can use to achieve uh, the vision and goals that are articulated in the plan. It covers a lot of ground. And since this is Long Lake's first comprehensive plan, and we started almost from scratch, um, so it was a lot of work. And, you know, typically municipalities will update the comprehensive plan periodically to stay abreast of changing conditions and priorities. You know, we can't anticipate what's going to happen 10 years from now. Um, so it's it's good practice to you know reevaluate the plan periodically. It's a living document, um, so it would behoove you to say, hey, you know, this is a snapshot in time of our community. All right, and what are they used for? Um, you know, they're really useful tools um, for achieving grants. Uh, communities with a comprehensive plan are at a competitive advantage for grant funding applications. It shows that you know when a municipality is asking for funding that they've already identified the desired project uh, during the exhaustive public planning process you know it helps with decision making on the local level uh, it can help the town board make decisions about the future uh, since a comprehensive plan is developed with extensive public input it can help inform decision makers when they're faced with difficult decisions whether it's uh, you know budgeting or you know they want to participate in the program it's not often that such an exhaustive public participation process is conducted. So it, it's a very useful document for decision making. It's also good for communication. Uh, it can communicate to future residents or potential businesses or developers that are you know, thinking about relocating or starting up. You know, someone from outside the community should be able to pick up a comp plan or comprehensive plan. If I slip into the lingo, excuse me, um, and get an idea about where the town sees itself in 10 years and what residents value. So it's a really great communication tool for potential uh, you know, businesses or residents. And so how you guys got started with the comp plan, you know, before Chazen was involved, um, you know, under Supervisor Clark Seaman, he applied for a competitive Empire State Development grant uh, to develop a comprehensive plan. Uh, the town won the grant, uh, solicited proposals from qualified planning consultants, uh, and formed an advisory committee. So in mid-2019, a little over a year ago, um, Chazen was selected, uh, and then in September, the first committee meeting was held. You know, we had assistance. This is the Chazen companies were an engineering, uh, landscape architecture, planning, environmental services firm. Um, our office is based out of Glens Falls, the northernmost office. And we have other offices in uh, you know, Poughkeepsie, Troy, White Plains, and Oregon and Tennessee. But we also work with another uh, pl uh, BN planning and design to develop some of the concept maps that you're going to see uh, in the plan later. So the planning process, you know, it was really led by the town of Long Lake. Uh, you know, Alex with the uh, Parks and Rec Department was really instrumental in this and other town staff, supervisor, 
the advisory committee was central to you know directing this process and then the planning team uh, you know we're there uh, as professional planners to you know facilitate the process but not to interject our you know personal opinion to this like this is your community this is your plan um, so like I was saying the advisory committee was really important to this uh, we've got a list here um, of the advisory committee excuse me if you know I missed some of the other people in the community that were really instrumental to this. Um, so there were some other Racket Lake residents who organized themselves to help identify stakeholders and reach out to uh, people over in the Rat Hamlet over there. And so these residents had the patience to review demographic information, uh, look at previous plans, attend long night meetings, reach out to fellow community members, and patiently correct us when we uh, bungled place names like Coney Mountain or Pony Mountain. I, it was a terrible mistake. <laughs> Won't do it again. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so, you know, they really helped too with the uh, public outreach efforts and make sure that they were effective. Um, so really at every step of the planning process, the advisory committee was weighing in, making decisions about what direction the plan was taking. So planning is an iterative process, uh, which is another way of saying it's very deliberate. And sometimes uh, a year into it, committee members are probably saying painstaking. Uh, but the first step is information gathering. And this involves you know, demographic research, site visits, review of existing planning efforts, uh, and then to catalog and like a catalog of like the town's existing physical resources, land use patterns, uh, recreational assets, to name but a few. And this research was guided by what we heard from the committee at the very first uh, very first kickoff meeting last September. Um, and it was great, it was really good at this first meeting to get an idea from residents, you know, hey, what are the big issues? What are your concerns? What are the opportunities that you see? And just to summarize some of them quickly, um, you know, there's concerns over a shrinking population. There's a need for quality housing that's accessible to the people who live and work in the area year round. Um, there's a real, real need for reliable communications technology. Um, you know, and the lack of municipally owned land in Racket Lake can be a challenge sometimes. And the, you know, there's an issue with the relative isolation between Racket Lake and Long Lake Hamlets, um, to name a few. But there was also a lot of good positive trends that people discussed. Um, you know, they, they noted a renewed sense of enthusiasm and energy from residents. Uh, there's new young people moving to town with families, businesses, and ideas. Um, you know, there's vacant commercial properties that are, you know, in Hamlet areas that could be reopened. Uh, there's been an expansion of shoulder season activities. Uh, there's greater interest in diversifying recreational offerings. Uh, there's the promise of telecommunicating and all that could offer to people. And there's a lot of great active community groups and lake associations that are helping to make the community a great place. So this early identification of opportunities and challenges was, was really instrumental in guiding like the next steps of the process and focusing our research. So after we did this initial round of information gathering, um, you know, we moved on to public outreach. I mean, what good is a plan, a community plan without broad input from residents? So the public input, which we're gonna dive into at the next slide was cataloged and reported back to the committee throughout the process. And the committee used the public input to help formulate goals and recommendations and to guide further research into topics identified throughout the process. And then during the plan development stage, the committee walked through this preliminary set of goals and recommendations that we had culled from everything that we heard uh, from residents, from you know public input, focus group sessions. And we put this, this very initial framework of goals and recommendations together. We went through it with the committee. The committee you know, gave us input, comments on it. We revised that list, and then we started to draft an actual plan document. And that plan document was given back to the committee. They had an opportunity to review it, provide comment. And so we revised that document. And what you see now on the town website is the result of those iterative rounds of revisions and comment period. Um, so that's now up, up on the website for review. I would encourage you to look at that. So for the planning process, really key to this sort of captured in these images is, um, you know, public engagement. Uh, so as you know, Long Lake, you know, we're, you're in the least populated county in the state. Um, residents are spread out uh, geographically, they're spread out seasonally. Uh, there's gaps in technology that prevent us from using some of the tools that we'd use in a more urban or suburban environment. Um, and then there's also the fact that, you know, the hamlets of Racket Lake and Long Lake are very far apart. Um, you know, they associate with different areas, whether it be Utica or Glens Falls. And so that was sort of a unique challenge there. But, uh, you know, despite that, 
we work with the committee to develop a public engagement strategy that would be, you know, really effective. Um, so first off, the advisory committee identified stakeholders. These are people that can offer like a unique perspective on the community. Um, so in person and via telephone, we reached out to dozens of people and we just had open-ended conversations about the current state of the community and what they viewed as opportunities for the future. Uh, so these one-on-one -on -one conversations were really effective because there's far less pressure than having to stand, uh, you know, stand up in a, in a public meeting. So in the planning process, uh, I left off, we were talking about stakeholders. So we worked with you know, dozens of stakeholders that were identified by the advisory committee uh, over the course of a few months to have one-on-one -on -one calls. And um, <clears throat> it was really, it was a pretty nice opportunity to talk with people without the, the uh, in, you know, sort of the pressure of staying up in a public meeting and, uh, excuse me, phone's ringing without having to you know, stand in front of a whole public meeting and you know, express your opinions and ideas. So that was a really good way. And we had dozens of people participate in that. Um, the, other, um, the other prong of our public engagement was focus groups. So and as opposed to just having these one-on-one -on -one calls, we convened focus groups. This involved people from you know, recreation, uh, the business community, education. Uh, so we had one day of focus group meetings in, in the, um, <clears throat> In the town of Long Lake, and then we scheduled a follow-up meeting in the Racket Lake. All right. Second here, I'm trying to share my screen, folks. All right, I think we're back here. Great. So the focus groups are really effective um, in Long Lake and Racket Lake. The Racket Lake one was nice because as opposed to trying to get everyone from Racket Lake to come over to Long Lake, uh, we spent an evening up there at the school. We had, I think maybe 13 or 14 people. Um, very, really productive conversation there too. Uh, the community survey was another tool that we used with great success. Um, so we developed a 22 question survey with the help of the advisory committee to be distributed online and in paper format, because we understand there's like a, a pretty big uh, technology gap, um, whether it's internet reliability or connectivity. Um, so we put together a you know 22 question survey. We distributed it in Racket Lake, Long Lake via the internet, social media, uh, and we got about over 300 responses. So uh, I think we had yeah 300 individuals respond to it. Um, so 39 of those respondents identified themselves as permanent Racket Lake residents. 130 identified themselves simply as um, residents of the town of Long Lake. 134 were seasonal residents uh, and 21 respondents uh, work in the town. So the response rate from permanent year round residents was about 43% of the population, which is an excellent response rate for any sort of community survey. You know, it's not a scientific survey. Um, you know, we don't, you know, with only 300 responses, it's not scientific, but it does give us a really good impression and um, some sort of strengthens a lot of what we heard in our stakeholder uh, meetings and focus groups. Um, and those results are included in the appendices of the plan. We also did uh, another sort of alternative approach to public engagement where we went out to the uh, Long Lake Winter Carnival, which is awesome, uh, a little bit cold, but a lot of fun. Then Jordan went to the Racket Lake uh, Winter Carnival, and I think she participated in the frying pan toss. I'm not sure. I don't think she won, unfortunately. Um, and Alex does a great job of maintaining the uh, the town's website and social media outlets. So that was a good way to like you know get information out to people. There's a comment form on there, and also kept people abreast of you know things like the survey and meetings like this. And now the, the plan itself is posted there. So. Uh, and we also reviewed a lot of the previous planning efforts that had happened in the community. There's been, you know, between Hamlets 3, um, you know, a, a Racket River Blue A plan, uh, Hamlets to Huts. There's been a lot of great uh, planning efforts that have been conducted. And you want to really respect the efforts that people have already put into the planning process. I mean, it, planning fatigue is a very real thing. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we touch on those, understood those, and incorporate those as appropriate into our, into our document. So when we were fairly through a lot of the public participation process and this initial um, information and fact finding, we pivoted towards, you know, all right, where do we want to go now? Like, what's the future? Um, 
So the first step was to develop a vision statement. Um, and this drew from previous planning efforts, a lot of, uh, a lot of it from Hamlet's three actually too, which had done a pretty good job of preparing one. And this vision statement was intended to weave all the goals and recommendations together and provide overall guidance about their purpose and intent. It can sound a little highfalutin when you read it all at once, but it, it is intended to be uh, visionary and forward thinking. Uh, you know, and some of the items we pulled out from the vision statement are included on the slide, uh, you know, provide a scenic landscape that's a unique place to visit, uh, work, recreate, uh, you know, foster an environment that, you know, you could establish a small business in. Uh, there's a lot of interest in, you know, smaller uh, commercial activities as opposed to really large scale activities. Um, you know, really improve the hamlets, make a charming walkable area. You know, the unique character of the hamlets is really what draws a lot of people to the area. Um, and then, you know, use various tools and techniques, and we're going to get into these to sort of maintain open dialogue between the Hamlets of Long Lake and Racket Lake, and, you know, continue to advocate um, for funding for residents. You know, it's a small community, but the, the town can have an outsized role in advocating for, um, for improvements. You know, overall, I, what we, we learned a lot as part of this vision statement exercise is that people really do love Long Lake for its character. Um, you know, they want to see some, you know, improvements in the community, but it's not, you know, a foundational shift to the character of the community. They want to maintain this, you know, tight knit, uh, resilient group and uh, make, you know, smaller improvements. So after the vision statement uh, was established, we moved on to goals and recommendations. Uh, these are organized into topic areas, um, you know, and big picture, you know, the plan recognizes that um, we can't separate all of these recommendations to different topic areas because something like, uh, let's just say, you know, improving telecommunications bleeds into topics such as, uh, you know, critical services, infrastructure, and economic development. But, we you know, we tried our best and we noted crossovers where they do occur. Um, so all these, not all these recommendations are brand new ideas. You know, there's a lot of things that the town is already doing that are great um, for such a small community, for a community of any size. And, you know, you'll see that some of those are captured in the plan. You know, the point there is to sort of encourage those things that are already happening and support them going forwards. You know, some of the, the key themes that we saw um, as we looked at all this giant list of recommendations is that you know, there's a, this sort of a sense of a new spirit of collaboration between government, businesses, uh, institutions, and regional and state groups. You know, there's this desire to leverage the town's recreation assets and tourism infrastructure. Uh, there's a huge emphasis on economic development and tourism, sort of as this this singular category. And then, you know, a need to have long-term investments in quality and infrastructure and community services, not just these immediate small things, but also these big, far-ranging ideas. So I'm going to introduce you to the overall goals of each topic area and some of the key recommendations. Uh, I really encourage everyone to review the comprehensive plan, which is on the website, because uh, there's some, there's also some paper copies available. I think Alex has made those available in uh, both Hamlets. Um, and I would imagine that they're available upon request. So it's not just digital. Uh, so we've got you know over 70 detailed recommendations. So we can't address each one, uh, but for each of the goals, we're going to sort of walk you through it here. So the first topic area is recreation. Um, you know, want to provide residents and visitors with a variety of quality recreation options that are suitable for a wide range of ages, abilities, and interests throughout the year, uh, and improve connections between existing recreation facilities. So this means, you know, working with state and regional partners to leverage existing recreational assets, whether they're, you know, it's working with the DEC or the APA on their unit management plans. Um, you know, there's a lot of publicly owned land, but the, the town still can influence how those are developed. Um, you know, establish, you know, public-private partnerships. There's a lot of great institutions uh, that would benefit from quality um, recreation offerings that would, boss, you know, improve their business and they could also be supporting the town. Um, there's a desire to develop Mount Sabatis into more of a recreational uh, destination. I know the town's already started with some concept plans, uh, but there's ways to, you know, further those designs and that's, type of project that is really ripe for grant funding. Uh, to monitor and maintain assets, uh, to map and maintain what's already here, um, and then really, you know, continue to allocate town resources for the maintenance and upkeep of uh, trails and these uh, facilities like snowmobile trails. 
And again, you know, really just scratching on the surface here, you're going to have to look at the plan to get a more detailed uh, narrative on each one of these recommendations. Um, for infrastructure, um, you know, ensure the infrastructure is designed, operating, built in a uh, suitable and resilient manner. You know, this really looks at, you know, a lot of the dams, uh, and other like water control devices. Um, those are pretty big ticket items that have a huge impact on the area. And there's a lot of potentially federal and state money that could be uh, exploited to, to improve those. Um, electrical service reliability. That's huge. We heard that over and over again that we need a more resilient network. And I know the town's already making efforts on that, but it's going to have to be an ongoing effort. Um, you know, continue the uh, water system upgrades, and you know, consider you know how the public and private wastewater systems are operated and maintained. So this could be even talking to like DEC and, and private landowners to see how it could be improved and find collaborative solutions. Of uh, critical services, this topic area it includes, you know, uh, medical and fire. You know, the town doesn't maintain a police force, but the town's always relied a lot on volunteers. And, you know, find a way to continue to support those volunteers, whether it's, you know, financial or not, whether it's just, you know, helping with recruiting, uh, providing the physical space, um, you know, helping them in any way possible. And then also just, you know, improving these, uh, contingency plans and emergency contact efforts. I know the town just got, as we were doing this plan, got involved with a like an automatic uh, robo calling service for emergencies, and that's great as well. Also, doing things like uh, you know in, enhancing the Racket Lake Fire Department. That's a project that's been on the books for a while. For um, economic development and tourism, uh, this really focuses a lot on you know retain the existing businesses that you do have. If you can keep the ones that are already here, that's a huge first step. Um, you know, work with those groups, understand what their needs are. Um, this could be, you know, partnerships. It could be a business association. And then next, you know, attract and foster new businesses that'll provide local employment and amenities in addition to reinforcing the character of the community. So be careful about, you know, understanding that residents really do value the charming Hamlet feel. So as, as you, sort of work on business attraction, uh, you know, focus on what we have here and, and what the character is. And also, you know, increase tourism to shoulder and off seasons. And this has already been underway, but this is definitely one of the things that has to keep getting hammered home. So a lot of partnerships, um, training and modernization, uh, leveraging institutional partnerships. There's a lot of great institutions in the town of Long Lake and the surrounding areas. Um, and then also do things like, you know, assess um, the status of all the lodging in the community. For environmental resources, um, one of the foremost things is to protect and improve the water quality of the lakes, um, in addition to Long and Racket Lakes and all the other lakes in town. But, you know, they have value as cultural, environmental, and economic resources. That's really, you look at the name of the town, Long Lake, without the lakes, we're really nothing. So. You know, continue to partner with the lake groups. Uh, they have partnerships with universities. They have partnerships with, um, you know, other state groups, oil and water conservation districts, the county. You know, continue to like harbor those relationships and support them. But we do get into a bit more detail in the recommendations for that section. Uh, for housing, again, this came up repeatedly throughout the planning process. Housing is critical for quality of life, uh, for business retention, um, you know, getting employees to live and work here. You know, there's been a persistent brain drain throughout rural America in the Adirondacks due to, you know, opportunities elsewhere. So if there is a better uh, match between incomes and housing, uh, that would do a lot for the community. So it's really a matter of, you know, exploring some of these new models of providing housing, whether it's partnerships with um, for profit sector or not for profit or other Adirondack. Um, organizations. Um, and I will note too in the housing section, one of the recommendations is stay abreast of the short-term rental industry. You know, it can, it can be a really positive thing for the town providing much needed accommodations for visitors, but it's also, you know, there's potentially uh, negative impacts. Look at uh, North Elba, Lake Placid right now, they're struggling to deal with the impact of that on their community. So right now it's a great thing, but monitor it, stay on top of it, understand it. Um, for transportation, uh, 
transportation is a huge issue in rural America. Um, just the cost of transportation and the ability of seniors to drive their own automobiles. You, seniors want to stay in the community. They want to age in the community and be a part of it, but without some way of getting around, that's really challenging. Um, so, you know, we've got recommendations to expand and enhance the little bus service, um, improve sidewalk networks in the Hamlet areas, expand non-emergency transportation options, especially in Racket Lake, and then work also, this is more on the physical side, work with state partners to ensure that bridge improvements when they do occur, account for recreational users as well. Um, that goes into the, you know, the town's role as lobbyist. Um, for community services and municipal operations, um, you know, develop a capital improvement plan was one of our first recommendations. So figure out, you know, what, how all the existing municipal buildings are, are serving people um, and how they can be most efficiently used. Um, you know, continue to upgrade the utility and appearance of public facilities. Um, so they instill civic pride, you know, the municipal structures in the Hamlet, well, at least in the Hamlet of Long Lake are, you know, they're very critical or they give first impression to people. It's like, get those uh, looking excellent. I know that the town is already uh, underway for improving these. Um, you know, continue to support the, the school districts. I know that uh, Racket Lake is not currently uh, teaching pupils, but they still serve as a really important uh, community space and find ways to continue to integrate them in the community. You know, using those facilities for things like yoga or classes um, or just meeting spaces is really huge. Um, uh, the, actually another really big part of this one too was that this is where we talked about the communication between Racket Lake uh, and Long Lake recommend forming a Racket Lake committee. So this could be residents of Racket Lake that report to the town board, you know, and they can do this remotely, you know, to consider using technologies like this for all with all of its foibles. Uh, and, you know, that would be a really good way instead of having to drive, you know, half an hour each way in the winter to participate in the town board meeting, say, hey, you know, we're going to have the Racket Lake committee, uh, you know, participate via Zoom, or they'll be holding independent move meetings and reporting back to the town board. And that might be another good way to sort of let the residents of Racket Lake stay involved in municipal government because the, you know, the distance is pretty considerable. Uh, Hamlet beautification initiatives. So we outlined these in the concept maps that we're gonna get to in the plan, but overall, you know, improve the appearance of the Hamlet areas. Um, this includes, you know, streetscape enhancements like lighting, sidewalks, uh, signage for wayfinding, and we're, we're going to see some really pretty graphics of what that looks like and what the costs associated of installing those would be. And then quality of life. This topic area is really sort of a kitchen sink area. Uh, so maintain the high quality of life and retain the essential rural character of the community. And in here, we have recommendations, uh, you know, continue to promote and organize community events that instill civic pride and also serve for, you know, tourism purposes, um, you know, increase access to healthy and affordable food. I know it's a challenge with such a small population, but there are different groups, whether it be Anka or other uh, Adirondack organizations that are working to get people in contact with uh, food producers. So you have, you know, reliable, fresh, healthy produce and whatnot. Um, and then start exploring ways to ensure that the town has long-term access to local health care. You know, right now you have a great uh, system set up, but, you know, going forwards, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you know, is that model still going to work? Uh, but the town right now should be figuring out a plan for how to address any sort of coming, uh, you know, health care needs. And then also continue to develop an appreciation for local history. And this is individually on the town side and through institutional partnerships. And this is you know, partially for civic pride and partially because, you know, there is a really growing network of heritage tourism. Not everyone's come to the Adirondacks to go, um, you know, paddle the 90 miler or, you know, hike the high peaks. They also want to check out the, you know, the really rich local history and culture that's here. So I think there's a lot of opportunities to, to continue that in town. So those are the general topic areas. And we move now to the townwide map. These are the, the maps that were developed in partnership with uh, BN Planning and Design. And they, you, you know, people will be handed a plan that's, you know, 70 pages long with a 200 page appendices. And the first thing they do, they're going to flip through it and say, where are the cool pictures? And then they're probably going to land on this. So 
we put this together, you can print it out, put it on the wall, uh, and we try to capture some of the big physical improvements, some of the trail connections, multi-use trail connections, or snowmobile trail connections, some of the big picture ideas um, on a town-wide scale. So, so it's a single page, uh, you know, you can pull it out, you can take it with you, it can serve to communicate ideas very quickly and efficiently, uh, especially when you're speaking with outside entities or just getting people interested or excited in the plan. Uh, we also prepared, you know, for each hamlet, uh, similar maps is for Long Lake, uh, you know, outlines, you know, gateway enhancements, uh, continuing the nature trail, um, upgrades to the ball field, uh, develop the, formalize and develop the power line trail uh, from Mount Sabatis to points, um, <clears throat> points uh, west. Um, and then, you know, general sort of shuffling around of some of the, the town facilities, you know, as part of that capital improvement plan, it's like, hey, is this the highest and best use of this facility? You know, where are we going to improve? Um, how do we, you know, store things properly and uh, make it function for everyone? And then we have the Racket Lake Hamlet. Um, again, talk about, you know, working with willing landowners uh, to make sure that any municipal services or sort of community uh, oriented uses that are there are either, you know, hey, is there a way that we can could work with a willing landowner to either gain permanent access to land or negotiate a long-term lease? Um, show the Racket Lake Fire Department, bridge, to, bridge maintenance, um, and, you know, consider working on school district improvements because it is, you know, the de facto community center, um, the community controlled land in Racket Lake. So how do we get it all done? Um, so it's gonna be an ongoing effort. Uh, this is gonna be sustained effort by the people that were involved in the planning process. Uh, it's gonna be the town board. It's gonna be you know Alex's team and the parks and rec department. Um, and what we've suggested as part of this is you know, develop an implementation committee. Um, so to maintain momentum, um, you know, forming a standard implementation committee would require coordination between the town board, you know, parks and recreation department, but also business owners and other residents. Um, they could hold regular meetings, report to the town board, and they'd be able to tackle projects and initiatives outlined in the comprehensive plan in a way that um, you know, the town board may not have the time to do because they're really involved a lot with the nuts and bolts of day-to-day -day governance, budgeting, and, and whatnot. So having another implementation committee to stay abreast of these long-term projects because they can take years and years, you know, grant funding opportunities come sometime one year cycles, two year cycles, four year cycles. So you need to have somebody that's keeping their eye on the ball. So uh, we so we outline that in the implementation section of the plan. Then we also discuss funding, uh, you know, grants are the primary means of funding these types of projects that we outline. Um, and so we provide a list of various state, regional uh, and federal plans that might be available. Um, right now, there was a really big shakeup in the state with the pandemic, um, you know, and the, and the associated economic crisis. So the usual rounds of grant funding that happen every single year, consolidated funding application, those are disrupted this year. But at the same time, there might be opportunities on the federal level. We don't know what's happening right now, but in the event that there is a large, uh, you know, federal stimulus package to, you know, state and local governments, having this comprehensive plan in hand and adopted with projects outlined is a really excellent tool. Um, when grant funding is available, one of the most important things people are looking for is shovel ready projects, things that have been considered, talked about and thought through. Um, so definitely, you know, one of the things that everyone's gonna have to do upon the adoption of this plan is just pay attention, keep your ear to the ground on the federal level. Um, the implementation section also uh, identifies partners. There's a lot of other partners in the region that are facing a lot of the similar issues. Um, you know, the Five Towns Initiative has been really helpful. It shows that, you know, small populations can band together and get a larger voice at state government, regional level. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's Anka, there's Roost, there's the Lake Champlain, Lake George Regional Planning Board, and all these different groups out there, and we outlined quite a few of them, you know, they have the technical capacity, they have the know-how, um, they can, you know, regular coordination with these groups, partnerships, you know, there's a lot of shared um, objectives and missions with these guys. So tap into their technical knowledge, um, their institutional connections, and really, and really use those. So it's a lot uh, taken as a whole. So 
what we tried to do is put together an implementation table. Uh, this table is included after we have all of these um, sort of narrative descriptions of the recommendations and goals. This is a takeaway. This is a you know eight page uh, se section of the plan. And really quickly, by topic area and bullet points, we say, all right, these are the recommendations, here are the partners, and here are the funding source that you can look at. So if anyone you know, doesn't have the time to look through a 70-page document, they just want to say, let's get to the meat of the thing. Say, all right, look at the implementation table, look at the concept maps, like this is the gist of it right here. Um, and then for the projects that are like, oh, I'd like to get into that, you can refer back into the document it's organized in such a way that you can say, all right, I want to get some details here, or hey, how do we arrive at this? The comprehensive plan is laid out. So, hey, we lay out the process. You know, this is deliberate um, public participation process, uh, a lot of you know, advisory committee driving this whole thing, and this is how we landed on it. But the implementation table will be that one you know, takeaway that you can get to. So the next steps. Um, in order to adopt the comprehensive plan, the town is going to be, you know, with the municipal council uh, dealing with the state environmental quality review act. Um, there'll be a 239 review, which just means a regional review, um, and then there'll be, you know, a formal public hearing held at a later date at a uh, town board meeting. So this will be another, you know, publicized event. Uh, the public will have another opportunity to comment, ask questions, um, approach the plan, talk to the town board about it. And when that pro and at the end of this process, the town board will vote um, whether to you know adopt the comp plan as is or revised. And you will have a comprehensive plan that can be used as you know a really useful tool uh, that outlines community vision, priorities, and projects, and, and how you get those projects done. So. Um, Briefly, and I know we went a bit longer, and again, I really do want to apologize for uh, not being able to corral those miscreants in the middle of the uh, presentation, but, uh, you know, teenagers. But uh, so if anyone has any questions, I think that we've probably been um, doing this through the chat function. I know that might have been a little bit um, bombed throughout this process, but... Okay, so I think I'm going to pass off control to Jordan here. Thank, thanks, everybody. Um, <clears throat> we are going to try and use the chat function. I apologize. I haven't been able to jump in during the presentation like we had intended um, by... Uh, controlling the conversation, we were able to block out the interruption there. Um, you know, I, 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 I personally like to apologize for that. That's utterly offensive. Some of the comments and displays that were there, it's unacceptable as Harry Truman says, the buck stops here, even though I wish I had control over the technology, ultimately it, it, I do apologize and, and um, for, for, for that. Um, I wanna commend Ethan on a tremendous job of two things. One, he already had a, a really difficult task of trying to present an incredible amount of content that is in this draft comprehensive plan, uh, which is very difficult because we are going over very big topic areas that have tremendous amount of, in, uh, of detail. Um, and, then, and then to be interrupted the way he was. So I, I commend you, Ethan, for being able to handle that the way you did. Um, what I wanted to add early in the presentation was, um, this, this might be one of the rare occasions where you hire several consultants and all three of us grew up as kids inside the blue line. Um, when we took this project on, one of the things that we were tasked with uh, understanding or, or asked even before we were selected was to uh, under, understand uh, the nuance between th that Long Lake truly is a unique community. It's not just in, as every community is and that there's a unique relationship with Racket Lake and Long Lake, for example. And, and that really, the public participation piece was really customized and tailored to to you all. We traditionally just do a standard public workshop, for example, on a Tuesday night and ask everyone to come. And, you know, the advisory committee was very sensitive to how can we meet you all where you're at versus just holding a token public workshop. So our, our public outreach was very much unique. So if, if you felt like there wasn't a public workshop like you hear about in other communities um, until now, that's really the rationale there was that between the survey, the focus group meetings, the attendance at the winter carnivals, 
um, stakeholder calls, you name it, all those efforts uh, um, uh, in addition to the committee meetings were, was really tailored to say, hey, look, this is a spread out community. It has two sort of uh, two centers, if you will, and we really need to customize that outreach. And I think the plan, and, and I'll, I'll be quiet here in a minute, I think the plan, I encourage you to please, please go look at it. And for example, the topic of recreation or economic development, uh, it, the amount of detail in any one of those sections is really important. I think Ethan gave one of the best pieces towards the end where he said, if you look back at the implementation table and you look at economic development in any one topic area that you're interested in, the idea is you'll be able to go back to that economic development section and read in detail what that recommendation is about. What was the idea? What was the premise? Where did it come from? And then more important, equally important, if not more important, how do you get to the goal that you want to achieve? And we hope between uh, the community input and the support uh, of the ideas that the, the committee was able to, to develop uh, and the, coupled with the organization of the plan and then ultimately the implementation table and the, and the strategy that we outlined in that table, um, it, it's gonna be a living document, which it's meant to be. It's not meant to be on a shelf. It's meant to be dog-eared tagged, referenced, beat up, argued, ripped apart, uh, copied and pasted, uh, uh, built on, uh, you know, added to, you name it. Um, and so this is really the start. Um, the, and I, and I'll, I'll leave you off with this. The implementation piece with respect to the implementation committee, we have found that to be tremendously successful. Uh, I mentioned, hey, we tried to tailor a plan to a community the size of Long Lake. We have found this in other smaller communities where we've worked throughout the state and including the Adirondacks where, look, at the end of the day, um, there are so many hours, right? And you've got a town board that dedicates themselves and there's so many hours. You've got uh, uh, other boards uh, in the community, um, other volunteers, other organizations, municipal staff. Um, the idea of an implementation committee is to help uh, provide or develop some carrying capacity where by that committee can spend the time uh, reviewing ideas, identifying grants, as Ethan said, and then and then helping them see them day to day. So in communities where they're up and running, they're meeting monthly and they're reporting back to the town board and they work at the, they serve at the discretion of the town board, mind you, they're not a rogue group by any means. And, it's, and as Ethan said, it's an opportunity for that business community and, and, and the nonprofit community and residents to interface and take part in the day to day operations advising the advisory committee. Um, it, from a grant standpoint, it's been tremendously successful in helping to secure grants. And, and I'm remiss about the CFA process this year, but the town is going to be very well positioned with the hopes that the CFA process will be around next year, in addition to other funding sources. Uh, one of the comments or questions was about federal funding opportunities. Um, uh, you may not realize that there's state funding that actually comes through federal dollars. So for example, transportation dollars or the Northern Border Commission that was recently tasked with that your supervisor was wise enough to try and pursue some funding opportunities there. Um, I, I, my, it's my understanding, unfortunately, it's very competitive and, and, and um, the community wasn't selected for that. But the point is there was a plan in the ready and there was an effort easily readily identified and, and, a, and a leadership to leverage that plan to pursue what limited funding there is. And, and that puts you in a better position than you were say a year ago from today. So with that, I wanna thank you all. Again, I wanna apologize. Um, please use the chat function to ask any uh, questions that you may have. Uh, having said that though, as Ethan pointed out, there is gonna be a formal public hearing for you to ask questions as well. We encourage you to write emails, call us. We have contact information. If you don't get a chance to ask, ask a question tonight, but with that, if you had a few questions that came up during the chat, um, we'd be happy to answer them. And, and there, if, if I don't see any pop up, I hear crickets. And, and just to answer a few that came up earlier, I did see what federal dollars, hopefully I, I briefly mentioned, for example, the, the Northern Border Commission, someone was kind enough to, to post funding from uh, EDA, which is, exact, which is a tremendous source along with a link. Um, I, I mentioned a lot of federal dollars do come through uh, the state. There, there is a rumor, uh, please don't quote me on this, that there might be a mini CFA process that might be related to um, say, for example, the, the Environmental Facilities Corporation, which is something you may have not heard of, but we've identified in the plan. Uh, there's federal dollars that come to the state uh, for that. So that, that helps with, uh, you know, for example, green infrastructure or sewer and water related infrastructure. And so th those are some of the, even though they're through the state, there's some federal opportunities, but there's, there's many more. 
Um, uh, with respect to the pandemic, um, that was another question that was posted on the chat. You know, it, it's very interesting that obviously the pandemic came during this. I, I think we were encouraged to see um, the um, uh, flexibility of the community to participate and engage and talk just in this process alone. I think uh, we're looking, we're learning. I, I don't have an answer for that for that question, but we're seeing it so far as the numbers are pouring in in terms of revenues and business activity in the Adirondack Park during COVID this summer that some communities have done better than they traditionally have. I don't know what Hamilton County and Long Lake experience was, but um, it's a little premature to figure exact, act, out exactly what it is. But I think things like collaborating, Roost, uh, 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 Jim McKenna over there. I know he's gave some great presentations about, you know, the, the post pandemic and marketing the Adirondacks as a, uh, uh, you know, an easy and safe place to travel. You know, I think, I think things like that, along with the resources you already offer and what we outline in the plan are going to be, um, you know, part of the recovery, if you will, as a result of the, the pandemic. And I'd be happy to talk more about that if you have any questions. Any others? The chat button's right at the bottom of the screen. I don't want to sign off if people have questions. I see there's still 36 participants, so I, I don't want to sign off prematurely. Um, you know, Jordan, we, I, I'm nervous about unmuting uh, just because of our experience just a minute ago, but... Um, yeah. Um, if anybody wants to raise their hand, we could unmute. That way I can monitor the uh, questions. I iPad, iPad 3, I think, had a question. Jordan? Um, iPad 3. I don't know. Ethan may have noticed that. Yeah. And then there's K, and I see uh, KS Paley raising their hand. Yeah, so we have some questions. Sorry about that. So why don't we start with, uh, if you see in the, the uh, participant list, Jordan. Yep. So I'm starting with KS Paley. I'm there we go. Hi. This is why we don't participate. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yep. Okay. The chat function is disabled. That's why you're not getting anybody Thanks. writing questions. Oh, sorry. Okay. So That's my exactly. question is uh, particularly about um, how you're going or what, what your plan is or what your thoughts are about attracting businesses. To the area? Have you done it anywhere else? Has it been successful anywhere else? Yeah, so um, to, to, to the sort of two part question, have we done it elsewhere? Uh, you, you know, I think the answer is, is yeah, you know, it's, it's funny when they talk about economic development, it's uh, um, shoot at anything okay. that flies and claims anything that lands. So I could probably sit here and tell you, hey, this is, you know, we're responsible for this or that or the plan was responsible for this or that. I think if you look to, um, we worked with Newcomb, for example, uh, several years ago on their comp plan. Uh, I remember when George, Supervisor Cannon was still with us, we went down to New York City to present that plan, uh, include some economic development opportunities. Uh, you, you talk to West Mega, Paul Hay, any, and some of those residents in the chamber there, uh, as a result of the, in re related to the plan, I don't want to claim full credit, but um, those efforts secured some of the dollars that came out from Essex Chain uh, acquisition that's have come to various communities. The plan was able to identify, had identified priority businesses that they then were able to fund some of the guide service development that happened in there. Um, we were told, um, uh, anecdotally that, um, you know, some of the investments in like the Hoot Owl Lodge were, were th those individuals may have made some of the decision based on the investments that the town was making. Um, uh, and there, and there's, there was a couple other, uh, other, uh, opportunities there that, that are, are an example. Um, uh, and I'm using some nearby examples, Indian, Indian Lake, uh, is to be determined their efforts, like the Townsend center, for example, that they're working on there. Um, and I know these are all different communities from Long Lake, but they're working on there is they're actually securing property and then going to be putting out to RFP preferred developers for housing and, and, um, in particular, there's talk of a restaurant or brewery possibly. So, so uh, you know, to be determined. In terms of Long Lake, what we outlined the plan, it, 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 it's multifaceted. So um, we believe um, that better coordination amongst the business community could be beneficial. We heard that from the business community. So the idea of a business alliance, we're not recommending a bid or anything regulatory like that. 
we think uh, uh, them coordinating would be helpful. Uh, in, in, I'll give you an example with respect to events. So let's say um, the town's event strategy that we talk about in the plan continue to grow and bolster and the business alliance collaborated that much more, that might present opportunities for greater visitation, greater use of lodging opportunities, for example. Um, we talk collaboration with ANCA, uh, grant funding, creating a culture of entrepreneurship, uh, collaborating with the school for, for young, for uh, young potential young opportunities. So uh, at, what was that, Ethan? I'm sorry. Legacy planning, uh, thank you, Ethan. Uh, ANCA, for example, has a program that helps collaborate and find businesses that if someone's thinking about selling or closing their business, um, which we heard some of the closures that have happened along Lake weren't necessarily of an economic decline per se. It's just people were ready to retire and sell or, or move on. You know, so ANCA and programs like ANCA offer a line. Is there someone else who's in, waiting in the wings to maybe take that business over so it's not lost in the community? Are you live? No, I'm not. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, sorry. I'm. I'm. Someone's. Uh, Ethan's sharing something in um, our mute situation. Um, you know, housing. We talked about housing uh, as somewhat of a some portion of the barrier of. Uh, everything from like the lake stewards not being able to live in town and and spend dollars or uh, you know are there ways that you know I think people think of the history in Long Lake of that of the sort of section eight housing model for affordable housing but there are so many other models that leverage private partnerships uh, for you know affordable housing we, we talk about some examples of that where there might be some new housing opportunities that for for say younger younger staff or professionals that are already needed for people working at, you know, the museum, for example, nearby, even though it's not in Long Lake. So there, there's a lot, it's a lot, it's a, it's a big question. It's a lot to unpack. And it's not just the economic bit. It's the totality of improving your infrastructure, improving your marketing, mm, et cetera. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hamlet beautification, you know, public investment in, you know, public facilities sends, sends a, um, you know, very clear message to potential developers that the community is serious about, you know, business, uh, you know, identifying where there are available vacant commercial properties that could potentially be, you know, resold to interested, uh, you know, business owners. So it really, uh, I think from the very start of the planning process, that was one of the big questions everyone had, you know, how do we get businesses here? How do we get year round businesses? And and you'll see as you read the plan that most of the topic areas feed back into that. You know, how can you have business without telecommunications? Uh, you know, how can you have a business if you don't have, um, you know, reliable emergency okay. services? Um, so it's really, um, you know, everything's, you know, moving towards having a whole complete community that allows for businesses to thrive. And, and, and I'll just add that one of the things we, we are not in the business of over promising and over serving. And so we didn't want to, Sit, come in and say, hey, we're going to help you develop a plan that's going to lead to that 20, 30, you know, 100 person employment center. Uh, nobody sees that anymore. You know, we're, we're down towards Glens Falls and we work in the capital region. Everybody, every community wants that. But given your community size, if in 10, 20 years from now, we can say, hey, look, we maintain the existing level of business we had and then grew three, four, five small businesses, you know, um, um, you know, uh, maybe a couple of couple of ones that were really a, sort of a landmark facility, then then that's that in and of itself is a victory. And we talked about right sizing the goals, if you will, you know, in terms of maintaining the population that could then support the 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 continuity of the school, um, and then and then have enough residents that can support because you really need heads and beds and visitation, right? So you need residents and then visitation rates, and so uh, organized. You know, marketing strategies that you have now uh, uh, and some of the other things we've talked about are really tailored to doing just that. Um, someone asked about, uh, did we prioritize recommendations? And, and, and we did. There's actually, uh, there's a lot of goals and recommendations, but we, we created um, hot chili, uh, hot chili symbols for ones that the committee helped to identify that were, you know, uh, really important long-term Pri uh, priorities that that the town should first focus on. Um, yeah, alternatively too, you know, if an implementation committee is formed, one of their, 
you know, first roles could be to say, hey, we have 70 plus recommendations in these different goal areas. You know, they've been well considered. They came from all this public input. But let's sit down. Let's take this implementation table and go through each one of these recommendations and say, is this immediate priority? Is this ongoing priority? Uh, is this, you know, long term? And then, you know, that would be a really good, like, first exercise for an implementation committee. Go, go through the implementation table and start ranking some of those priorities. Mm, right. right. Um, so, someone else also has a question about the Whitney estate, and this is an interesting one. Um, you know, we're really sensitive to uh, private property rights. Um, you know, some plans will draw up trails over property, private property all over. We found just recently, we inadvertently on one of our maps had uh, flagged a property that's in private holding, and we inadvertently just had it as a, as a conservation easement. And, you know, the concern is, hey, does that imply it's public access or any of that stuff? And so we're going to fix that. But the but the, the the thing that we're really concerned about when we see that when we make an error like that is we don't want we want to make sure that and the committee did and the community you're working with willing landowners. Um, and so the Whitney Estate is something that came up really. Um, I don't want to say the 11th hour. It was acknowledged that you know there's talk about the property, but um, we certainly the plan would certainly support given the priority of recre uh, recreation, the the importance of recreation. Um, we mentioned uh, the issue of what is it nine unit management plans and the yeah. 10 U UMPs in the town and how uh, uh, seemingly uncoordinated that is at a state level. And so if, if property, you know, and I, we haven't wrestled with the community, whether, you know, that should go to the state or not, but hypothetically, if it went to the state, you know, we talk about how the, the many UMPs are already very confusing. Um, we celebrate the five town effort in the plan, which is certainly was an effort that Long Lake was involved with, where it was grassroots locally driven to help do some of the classifications that happened as of late on new acquisitions. And so, you know, I think I think the plan would anecdotally support future engagement of the community to help identify what to do with the Whitney statement. So that's a grassroots locally led effort, regardless of which direction it goes. Yeah. And we, we did identify that a little bit in the plan as we were doing our sort of analysis of land use. It's like, Hey, so much of this land is controlled by whether it be the Whitney estate or other, you know, uh, interests. There are just vast tracts of land that are held by, by single landowners. So yeah, we, we looked at it, but, um, like Paul, to piggyback on what Paul said yeah. about the unit management plans, like really, you know, taking a more active role in uh, advocating for the town interests when some of these big decisions are being made uh, at the state level and regional level. Great, thanks, Kevin, for the feedback. Any others? And I'm, I put, is there I'll open the participants? I hope the chat function is up and running. Um, I do apologize for that as well. Jordan, do you see anyone raising their hand? I see a hand raised. Uh, iPad 3's hand is raised again, or still raised? Still, I apologize. Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Sorry, Thank you. Uh, Gerald Uncle and Dorothy Uncle, Racket Lake. Um, I just had a question. Maybe or perhaps a mobile doctor can visit the hamlets, maybe one day a week, as a as a service to the community. That's a, that's a great point. Ethan, a maybe, may, maybe you want to just talk, though, a little bit about some of the things we talk about with res respect to emergency and medical services. Well, you know, m most of our conversation uh, about medical care was, you know, first off is, you know, Racket Lake has the longest um, ambulance ride in the, what was it, the state uh, to Utica? <laughs> that's terrifying. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the idea that yeah. you know, <laughs> members of the Racket Lake community had s expressed interest in looking at ways to um, hire professional EMTs and sort of look at how that would work. Um, there was other conversations about um, in the in the Hamlet of Long Lake that healthcare facility. So I had long conversations with um, Doc Ryder there and just talking about you know the challenges of finding healthcare practitioners that are able to come up into these rural areas. Yeah. But um, you know we do point out partnerships with people like um, the Adirondack Health Institute, who's been really active in the Adirondacks, trying to tackle some of these um, issues because they, you know, they're based out of Glens Falls, I believe, but they've been really, really digging into the fact that you know the Adirondack communities have these pretty unique needs, um, 
And so we do, and when we talk about the medical stuff, we do point out those partnerships because it's going to be really hard um, with such a small population and limited budget to to sponsor those kind of activities. So it is a lot of advocating and it's a lot of partnerships with you know these existing groups. And and, and just on a on a regional level, I'm glad Ethan brought up uh, AHI, that Adirondack Health Institute. You know, we we've collaborated on research with them uh, throughout the Adirondack Park, helping to identify um, uh, health outcomes related to um, you know, obesity and, and, you know, a lot, a lot of the health outcomes that we see in rural uh, parts population centers and, and where they are in the Adirondacks and what services disconnect, disconnected services are. And that related to work with some, uh, one of the hospital providers in the area. And, um, you know, it's interesting, it's so complex, the provision of health resources. Um, just one small example, you know, well, the hospital, I won't bring it up, but the hospital in question didn't qualify for a certain rebate from the national level until recently, and it really hindered their financials. And they started limiting support that may have otherwise gone as far north as say communities as Long Lake and Racket Lake if they were financially performing better. And so um, they're now qualified for these certain payment plans and rebates. You know, the hope is that as a regional facility, they can maybe maybe provide mobile programs. I, I know it's a little esoteric or academic, but that's the, the issues that Racket Lake experiencing are uh, somewhat universal in rural yeah. America. The and, aging population too. And, is... and, and and so we do outline in the plan, we acknowledge that's an issue. We talk about the need for uh, uh, funding. You know, the, the mobile idea I think is wonderful. It is really just about identifying who that partnership is and who the funding would be. And I do think while the town can really try to do and is doing its best, but I think, you know, it, some of this is going to take a pretty significant regional uh, solution. Um, you, uh, I will say a little Salem, Salem, New York did just that. They convinced Hudson Headwaters to do mobile uh, clinics. So it is feasible. So we're, we think that's a, I think that's a really good idea. And we'll talk about it. Um, the tour, tourism is huge here. The population swells to thousands at times, maybe not this past summer, but in, in previous summers. And that may be a consideration as well for people vacationing here as to, in other words, my point is, it's not only about the residents here. Yeah. It's about people who are vacationing here as well. Yeah, having the tourism infrastructure to receive people. Yeah, we, and it's, it's right. really wild. So, what we heard was it's so dependent on volunteers right now. Um, and without right. that group right. of volunteers being active. Um, one of the things we touched on, you know, at the state level, there's a bill um, I think it's in front of the assembly. It's probably not too active right now, but it was, it, I think it was something as simple. I forgot the exact name of it. But the idea behind it was, hey, all these local volunteer services, instead of just, you know, taking, uh, whether it's residents or visitors on this long ride uncompensated, this bill would allow these volunteer ambulance services to actually bill insurance companies and that would be a huge lift so again that's one of those things where it's just you know staying aware of it and advocating really really good point so thank you uh let's see if there's any other hands raised um not seeing any hands raised no more chat so you know, I, if any, again, if anyone wants to raise their hand or add anything, uh, please do. But we don't want to keep you here if you if you don't. There, there is a tremendous amount in the plan. Um, we heard uh, somebody. I've heard a couple of people give us feedback on the committee that that I'm paraphrasing, but you know, all the things we've heard talked about over the years are really captured in this. So, um, you know, it's difficult to craft plans for a community, and we say this to the committee at the beginning. Our goal is not to make something that everybody agrees with 100%. The idea is to craft something that people, there's consensus on, that that given all the input and the balance of issues and concerns and, and things that are vital, we try to capture those. Our job as professional planners is to provide guidance about the tools and techniques that are sort of in the planning and economic development toolbox and to play devil's advocate. We certainly push back on ideas. And I think I think the committee was came out with a very open mind and, um, but really, you, I, I, my hope is as you read that, uh, and you'll, you'll see if you did get a chance to partake in it, and as Ethan said, you know, just the survey alone, getting 40% of the year-round residents and, and how many seasonal residents as well, we hope that you may see 
some of the very wording or, or sentiment that you actually provided. And, and that's when we, we really feel like we've done our job where there's people have consensus, they at least agree on the idea, or at least felt that they had a point to, to speak up and that, you know, um, it, it, it was weighed in on the decision making process and maybe did make it all the way through in some way, in some fashion. Um, I just want to reiterate next steps and then and we'll let you go. Uh, as Ethan said, there, there's some formal, like the environmental review, that's very important. I don't want to just pass it off. That's done by a town board resolution action. Um, uh, the, the regional review is so that the county can look at it and see how this plays in the regional, if they want to give any feedback. And that's another great feedback loop. And then there will be a public hearing that the town board will provide. It will be publicly noticed. And it, so if you didn't get a chance to answer the question now, or you're going to look at the, the um, uh, plan later on, you can provide that feedback during that. That's a hearing session. They're there to listen, not necessarily to answer questions, but to hearing. But we will get a chance to look at what is asked during that and, and process it and then make any, any final revisions. And then they'll go through the adoption process. And my hope is that at the time this is done, there will be a CFA and you will be in really good standing to be pursuing projects and, and up and running. To, to back a CFA is a, a grant opportunity. Yeah, thank, you. State. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to thank everyone for the cup kind remarks on, on chat. So yeah. And really, again, it's, you know, Alex and her team were really instrumental in corralling us throughout this entire thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Alex, been unbelievably helpful yeah, yeah. and supportive of the whole process. Alex wore a really important hat. She was great at making sure we followed the procedure, the process, but uh, uh, followed up, did everything, you know, but was very good about, um, you know, listening and, you know, taking part in the process with everybody else, but, you know, not, uh, she had to put up with a lot of our shenanigans. <laughs> and so, and did a great job throughout COVID. You can only imagine uh, what it was like when we, when we transitioned to doing this all remotely. Um, it was definitely a learning curve for all of us. So with that, thank, thank you. I hope you all have a wonderful night. Again, I apologize for that interruption. Uh, it's just a, a sad state of affairs that people feel comfortable saying that, showing that stuff. But um, on the other side of the equation, we had something like tonight and all you participating, which, which I think should give us all hope. So thank you very much. And I appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Have a great night, guys. Thanks.